Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. Have you ever given much thought to how immorality actually comes about? What happens in your life? What drew you into that? Or are you to the point in your life where you don't even recognize immorality when it's in your life? You know, good examples of immorality are looking at pornography on the internet, at home, wherever it might be, or having sex with somebody you're not married to, or as Jesus said, even lusting after a person in your own mind is still part of immorality. And when we look at that, we've got to understand what's going on so we can get the full help of God to repel it and push it back. So over in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 17, he said, and I want to highlight something. He talked about a woman that came to a young man and said, I want to have sex with you. And she just pretty much comes right out and makes it plain what she's after. And it says in verse 17, I have sprinkled my bed. So this sprinkling stuff, is that she's gotten it ready for them to go to bed together and have sex. And God's really direct about this. A lot of people think, well, God would never talk about this. God's using Solomon to explain a proverb about what it's like to get wrapped up in somebody else, an immoral woman, a seductress, somebody's going to lead you astray. And you look here and you go, I have sprinkled my bed. So she's clearly talking about I want to go to bed with you, and I've gotten my bed ready. And she makes it plain when she's saying that, that she's going to use myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. And today, people may come up to you and say, I want to have sex with you. And they may not say that directly. But you'll know when you're being hit on. Sooner or later, you'll work it out. And they intend... Those women, in particular, intend, like the proverb said, that they prepared their bed, they prepared what they want to do, they have in mind what they want to do with you. And God's saying, only the naive, the simple, the people who are not walking with God will fall into that. Today, we see all around us, people are living together or just having casual sex with each other, and they think nothing of it. And God's saying, no, there's still a problem with that. It's all immorality. So as we think about Proverbs chapter 7, verse 17 for our lives today, keep in mind that God says, I know what people say. I know what women say to entangle men, and I know what men say to entangle women in immorality. I know that. God's not a God who doesn't see and doesn't care and doesn't know. He knows. He even wrote it down from thousands of years ago for us to understand what people will say to entice us to go have sex with them and live in immorality with them. Be careful of that. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words of warning. May we take them to heart. May we avoid all forms of immorality. May we be careful of the people who say, I prepared my bed, that we'll have a good time there. Lord, we thank you for your marriage that you gave to us as a gift, the marriage of being married to Christ, but also the marriages we have with each other as human males with human females. Thank you, Lord, for your great gift. We pray in the name of Jesus, may we do what you say and live according to your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good, or tried to do more good than bad, or I tried hard, or I've done a lot of nice things, and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works, that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, 
We've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incur the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 3.26.23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5.8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day, but I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck, and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you the free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty, eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith, and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess, too, that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But, Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me that Jesus Christ is God, and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me, and your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. 
I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. Scripture quotations taken from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, copyright 1995 by the Lockman Foundation. Used by permission, all rights reserved.